Hey everyone, my name is Scott and I'm a Tesla Solar customer and I just recently had my system installed. I'm going to run through uh, what are my pros and cons of choosing Tesla for your solar compared to uh, another company. So let's uh, get into it. I'm get, this is uh, some of the points that I'm going to cover. Some areas where Tesla is a clear winner, like on cost. Um, some areas where it doesn't really matter so much which company you pick. And then maybe some areas where actually Tesla isn't as good uh, as the competition. So I'm going to go through each of these details. But before I get into it, I did want to point out that if uh, you do decide to go ahead and order Tesla for solar, do use my referral code. You will save up to $500. And uh, that's, the, that's the code there. You just go to tesla.com slash referral slash Scott52295. One other thing to note, I do have a bunch of other Tesla uh, solar, Tesla Powerwall videos, um, check them out. And I've got more coming soon, um, particularly in terms of how the system performs. So uh, do hit that subscribe button so you get alerted uh, when there's more available. So let's get into it and starting with the solar panel cost. This is an area where Tesla, in my opinion, clearly wins. Why? Because other companies can be up to 40% more expensive. And that's quite a significant difference. So Tesla has a very simple pricing structure. It, they charge $2 per watt. This, by the way, is how the industry charges. You're not paying for each panel. You're paying for the amount of electricity that those panels produce. Uh, from quotes I got last summer, uh, and so summer 2021, uh, those quotes were up to 40% more expensive. By the way, uh, when comparing costs, make sure that you're looking at it before incentives, before tax rebates. So if you do get quotes from other companies, just check the small print to see exactly um, how they're calculating those prices. So then this begs the question, well, why is Tesla cheaper? I mean, part of it is economies of scale. Of course, they're a nationwide company and they sell uh, a lot of solar. But there is one legitimate reason why um, there is a different uh, cost uh, in terms of panels. And so there's something called the performance guarantee. The panels degrade slowly over time. They produce less electricity as they get older. Um, and so the 25 year mark is where uh, companies you know, will warrant uh, their panel output. And so usually uh, you'll see between 80 and 90% performance guarantees at the 25 year mark. So let's say um, Tesla, and, and I don't know because they, they sometimes change their panels, um, but at least the Tesla panels I have, the efficiency or sorry, the performance guarantee is 80% at 25 years. The best in the market, I think, are high 80s or maybe even up to 90%. So when I was looking at this, I was thinking, well, is it worth spending 40% more to get 10% more output? in 25 years time. And for me, that was a clear no. Uh, so that's why the performance guarantee at the 25 year mark, it really didn't factor into, um, you know, uh, into my decision. So, but it, it is it's something to consider. There's another uh, aspect that people will talk about, um, particularly if they're installing, you know, the best quality panels, they say, well, our panels are more efficient. Um, and what that means is that they produce more energy per square inch effectively, but that doesn't matter uh, for most people, at least. If you have a roof with plenty of room, that's fine. Just get a few more panels. Um, but if you have a small roof and you're limited as to how many panels you can get up there and you're trying to maximize every square inch and get the most number of watts out of it, then yeah, panel efficiency does, does uh, come into it. So. Just remember, you know, what I said earlier, the industry charges per watt. They're not charging you for the cost of the panel itself. They're basing it on the number of watts it produces. So um, this particular point, like I said, unless you have a small roof and you're trying to maximize, panel efficiency just doesn't matter. So there's obviously the cost of the panels themselves, but then there's also the financing. And most people will finance this. A relatively expensive purchase could be, you know, anything from, I don't know, 
10, 15, 20 thousand dollars up to you know 40 or 50 thousand uh, dollars. Of course, it depends how many kilowatts you want to produce. So looking at uh, this is a real quote from a company. I won't name them, um, but they're a reputable uh, company that I went to, a local company. Um, they have, as you can see, a cash price and then a couple of different finance options, one over 12 years, one over 20 years. Now, what all of the local uh, companies do is they have to charge a finance fee. Now, that's not the interest. This is just a fee for buying the financing effectively. So in this 12 year example, that fee equates to $2,100, but in the 20, 20 year example, that's much higher. And of course, you still have the interest on top, right? So it becomes a much more expensive uh, purchase when you're factoring in, right? Maybe I'm paying 40% more for panels from another company and I'm paying a finance fee uh, on top. I've got one other um, example here, and you know there is certainly more flexibility if you go to a, a local company because they can usually offer different types of financing, different lengths of time. Um, Tesla doesn't do that; it's it, they really just have one offer, um, so you know that they have less less flexibility. But but look at these rates, right? If you want to minimize that loan fee, here's one that's only six hundred and sixty dollars. Um, your interest rate is going to be much much higher. So. That's the second way that you're you're paying uh, you're paying more. So just to summarize in the cost, okay. So other companies can be up to forty percent more expensive. They charge those finance fees on top of the cost of the panels, and they're usually offering higher interest rates. Tesla is able to offer very competitive interest rates uh, because of their size and their scale, and just because of uh, you know their funding and the fact that they. Um, have billions of dollars um, in the bank right now. So just for another reminder, if you do order Tesla Solar, make sure you use my referral code and you'll save up to $500. Now you'll notice on the side of this house, there's a couple of uh, square boxes. Those are Tesla power walls. And what is a power wall? Well, as this image uh, shows you, uh, this is during a power outage, there's a storm happening. This house here has got their power wall installed and their electricity is still on while their neighbors are sitting in darkness. And so for me, this was a really big part of it, right? I didn't just want to save money by putting in solar. I didn't just want to help the environment. I actually wanted a better uh, energy experience, if you like. So what is a power wall? It's battery storage and it provides you the ability to stay online, stay up and running. Um, keep all your appliances running um, during an outage. And that uh, that's pretty powerful. I think one of the big myths about solar is that if you just have solar panels, your power goes out when the grid is down. Uh, so during an outage, your solar panels, although they could produce electricity, they're not able to. It's only if you hook up solar panels to battery storage, are you able to actually keep running um, during an outage. So I really wanted that uh, that flexibility. So the uh, Tesla power walls, uh, they, they're not cheap, right? They're about eight to ten thousand dollars each. Um, they do give you a discount if you buy more. So just play around with their um, quoting tool on their website. But one th really important point to note is that uh, while all the independent companies will tell you that they can supply a Tesla Powerwall or something like it. Um, their prices are usually much higher, and because there's, uh, you know, all the supply chain issues, Tesla is prioritizing their own direct customers for the Powerwalls rather than um, independent uh, companies. So you may just not be able to get the Powerwalls um, if if you if you don't buy direct from uh, from Tesla. So. One really important point to note about uh, the power walls is that some states and some utility companies actually offer incentives for installing storage. Um, they do this because it actually helps them out, right? It helps them out during peak hours when, you know, if you have solar plus a battery, you can uh, not draw anything from the grid or you might even send power back to the grid. So that's why the, these uh, incentives are available. These are some of the states that currently offer incentives, but uh, check, you know, check your state if it's not listed here, 
go on Google, search your state, search uh, your utility company and see if they have any incentives uh, available because these incentives can in some cases pay for the entire battery um, or, or many thousands of dollars. In my case, uh, we, were, we got a $3,000 grant um, from our local utility uh, here in Nevada. And one more thing about this, the battery storage, as long as you get it when your solar is installed, it also qualifies for the same 26% federal tax credit that uh, the um, solar panels themselves get. So uh, I think that's well worth it. Um, so it really takes the cost uh, down, plus that incentive if you get one. It's uh, pretty awesome. Plus all the peace of mind that you get from uh, knowing that your power is going to stay on. By the way, that federal tax credit for solar uh, drops from 26% down to 22% at the start of 2023. So I think 2022 is going to be the year of solar with, uh, with this tax credit changing. So um, given how constrained a lot of companies and um, supply chains are right now, uh, I would really you know, advise you if you're wanting to do solar, just place your order uh, sooner rather than later. So that's, uh, that's the Powerwall, a very important reason why I chose Tesla. And remember, if you do order, um, use my referral codes, you get up to 500 bucks off. So a couple more points about the product. Um, Tesla boasts that they have attractive looking panels, and I think that's true. Um, they're low profile, they have a nice concealed edge on the uh, sides and on the bottom of your array, uh, and there's no vis visible grid, they're all black. Um, you'll notice in some houses you see those sort of black and silver squares. A lot of people think they're pretty ugly, um, and so all black usually uh, you know, blends in much better with uh, a roof. So that's, that's one nice uh, visual point why you might choose uh, Tesla. And then another really important factor, for me at least, you know, they're a, te they're a Silicon Valley tech company, and their software and their app is really, really good. Um, you can see exactly what's being produced. You can see what's being sent to the power wall or coming from the power wall. You can see what's going back to the grid. It's just a really nice app. Uh, you can chart uh, you know, by day or by week or month, um, and you can also export your data uh, into CSV as well. So if you want to geek out over it like I do, uh, really, really good, um, really good software. I've told you about the referral codes, so I'll just skip to my next slide. So these are some of the areas where Tesla doesn't do so well. So talking about system design, um, on the left is uh, the Tesla sketch of my house, and on the right is a quote from another company. Now, just ignore these large panels. These are from my pool, um, and this is a pool heating system, nothing to do with the uh, solar PV. So you'll notice um, this uh, other company uh, put in a lot more panels here. They put in panels on my uh, back porch, um, and that's just something that Tesla won't do. They only install on the main roof of your house. They are definitely more conservative uh, in terms of how many panels will go on. For example, there's an extra one here. Tesla just would not do that. Um, and I had to debate with them uh, uh, you know, uh, for quite some weeks over the number of panels we could fit on here. I think because Tesla's a national company, um, they're just being uh, cautious and careful and following the, the rules to the letter. Um, local companies, I think, know better what exactly is allowed in that city or that county. And um, so, you know, they, 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 they know what they can sort of <laughs> get away with. One point to know, and this is hard to, to judge, um, I have heard that some companies overpromise, right? They say, we can give you all these panels, but then uh, when it actually comes down to it, when they file the permits with the city, then the city come back and say, well, no, you can't because you need to adjust it or there needs to be you know, fire, better fire access and so on. So um, Tesla are super cautious. Local companies probably push it a little bit more. Um, and so you know, if, if you're trying to maximize every square inch, uh, again, Tesla may not you know, be the best option, assuming you have a choppy roof um, like I do. So they're not flexible, right? You can't talk to a designer. You know, if you're buying from a local company, assuming they're a good one, 
you can definitely talk to the right people. You can go back and forth with them. They're quick, they're responsive. And that's really the one of the key things that you know Tesla is struggling with, at least now, because they are so busy, is it's very difficult to get a hold, uh, to get through to them. You might wait for a long time and hold. Um, they're not very good at responding to emails. They're just super, super busy. So, you know, uh, a really good, reputable local company, you can just pick up the phone and talk to whoever you need to. Um, so that's something you've got to, got to factor in. Now, another important point is the warranty. So Tesla offers a, what they call a 10 year comprehensive warranty. Uh, they say that they offer at least 10 years for labor. The panel, panel manufacturer, um, actually offers a warranty of 12 years, at least for the panels they installed in my house, uh, which were Q-cell panels. Um, and But the inverter has a 12 and a half year warranty. Um, other companies typically offer a much longer warranty than that. So what I'd just say though, is just be very uh, careful, look at the quotes that you get um, and compare the details. You remember earlier I talked about the performance guarantee, which is how much power they output after 25 years. Um, I've seen that somewhat misrepresented to imply that your system has a 25 year warranty, um, which it probably doesn't. So just know what you're getting into. Uh, make sure you, you uh, read, read all the details. That's the best advice I can give there. There's another uh, product area where uh, Tesla perhaps uh, doesn't have uh, the edge and that's the use of what's called a string inverter uh, versus a micro inverter. Um, this is somewhat of a religious debate. There's a lot of information online about which is better. Uh, micro inverters are just small inverters placed in the back of a panel. So on the top of your roof, they're outside, they're exposed. They're gonna get very hot in the summer. That's, I think, the main argument. People say that, that you know, the microinverters are going to break down more because they're just outside, they're exposed to the elements. Um, but they, they will help, uh, especially if you have lots of shading, if you have lots of tall trees or chimney. Um, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're not careful and, and you install a well-designed system with a string inverter, then your output's going to be affected by, by that shading. So microinverters, they do help get more power out of each individual panel. Um, but the counter argument is, well, if you design the system well, it doesn't really matter. And uh, since your string inverter is probably going to be uh, on the side of your house or inside your garage like mine is, you're actually, you know, it's going to be more reliable, right? And if it does break down, it's going to be easier to service. Other, uh, otherwise, you're going to have to take out uh, or lift all the panels, replace individual uh, microinverters. So one final point. Um, Tesla, do not install a critter guard. These are pictures from my roof of my new Tesla uh, solar ins installation. And within a matter of weeks, um, pigeons had started making nests underneath. You see this pigeon about to duck under uh, the top of the panels. I had wrongly assumed that the skirts around the edge were to keep animals out. Uh, they're not, uh, and they only put them on three sides. They don't put them on the top side. So um, most, uh, at least here in Nevada, you know, in Vegas, we have a pigeon problem. So all of the local companies included as standard in their quote, the critter guards around the outside. Um, Tesla, don't do that. If you want it, it's going to cost, uh, you know, local companies going to charge you between five and eight dollars per linear foot of your perimeter. Um, my case, that was uh, around about a thousand uh, bucks uh, for my installation. So uh, that's an additional cost that uh, you may uh, want to incur yourself um, just to uh, keep down the pigeon uh, population. So that's it. These are all the areas I covered. I think some areas where te Tesla does really well, somewhere it maybe doesn't matter so much. Um, and somewhere I think, you know, Tesla are definitely not as good as, as really good, reputable local companies. Um, so thanks for watching. And uh, last plug, uh, if you do order Tesla, make sure to use my referral code. That will get you uh, up to 500 bucks off. Finally, before I sign off, I'll just say, please subscribe to my channel. There's more reviews like this. I'm gonna talk more in depth about uh, the performance output over time. And uh, there's also a bunch of other videos where I talk about the installation process, the ordering process. So uh, check them out.
thanks for watching. My name is Scott and I uh, hope you're having a great day.